Hi, this is Vaughan in Nova Scotia for a little video on throwing a ball. It's a howling day out there at the moment and I thought I would show this video so you could see the background as well. We've had a big, it's not snow, but we're having a bit of a rainstorm and it has got really cold so they're saying we might get some flurries later on today in the afternoon or this evening but it's been raining really heavily and the wind is howling okay now yesterday when I did a video I showed throwing cubed clay right out of the bag cut up without rounding it off but for my students I would like them to round off the ball of clay a little bit before they put it down it'll make it a lot easier to center the clay anyway, so the wheel has to be clean a little bit damp no water in between the two pieces so this is dry and this is actually moist, but just damp. And bang it down as hard as you can, right in the center. Makes it a lot easier when there's no big sharp edges like I did last night with the actual video on the mugs. Now, pull your chair right up, your thighs are wrapped around the wheel, so when you lean onto the clay, your head is right above the clay. And your hands can rest on your thighs, and that won't uh, let your body move around a little bit when you're actually centering the clay because if the clay bumps you your arms do this but if you're resting on your thighs it's a lot harder for that little bit of clay to push your whole body around anyway like I said last night wet your hand press down just to make sure the clay is sealed on the wheel and then both hands this arm tucked onto your thigh push in this one down and basically you're going to do that together but first a little bit with the top hand and then with the side wheel goes fast speed it up move the clay around so your hand this one there it is again that's where it touches the clay and all the way here that's where it touches the clay these fingers are not really doing much at all it's just those bottom little finger and the, the heel of the hand palm of the hand so hands wet top hand first then the side hand in and see if you can move the clay up and then moving it down up with the side hand down with the top hand my hand is not straight it's folded like that and the same with that one so they're pretty much the same shape except one's on the side and one's on the top that way you catch the heel because sometimes you can make mushrooming happen when the clay if you do it like that the clay just kind of scoops up along your arm so you want to keep your hands folded a little bit. So in sideways, down from the top, and do that a few times just to make sure the clay is actually even and consistent. And then go for that center point where it stops wobbling altogether, and then you let go slowly. Count to three while you're letting go. Try not to be surprised with anything, because if you let go fast, and I'll do that quick as a demo, if you let go fast, it starts wobbling because you're letting go at one point as it spins whereas if you let it go slowly once you feel that, that wobble has stopped you let go slowly it stops wobbling this hand is dry because it's spinning right on the wheel the wheel is and it burns here if you let it get too dry so be careful but basically keep it lubricated and make your hand rest on the wheel head so you can't be pushed around this elbow is tucked into your thigh and your hip in this hand I put my thumbs like that so that this hand is steady by this hand and they work together. So this is how it starts when it's off center. In top, move it around a little bit and then go for the center. See how the hands are folded, they're not flat on the clay. And then that goes slowly. All right. To make a ball, you want it to get wider so you don't have to control it quite as much as when you were doing a cylinder that's actually getting narrower. But the, the process starts the same. A little dimple in the top. Make sure you've got enough water. For beginners, try to dribble some clay and water in there. And that way you've got enough lubrication to push down a centimeter from the bottom. You pull sideways and then let go slowly. A ball generally doesn't have a flat bottom in the center. So you want to have that sort of gentle curve to the center. So I'm not going to put my fingernail underneath there, which I would do for a mug. I'm just going to let it be a nice, gentle slope on the inside. Wet both hands, move to the other side of the clay, and push your fingers in on the outside and on the inside, and press evenly this time, and the ball gets a little taller, 
the wall is now probably double the height. It's easy to dribble water on the piece if you just sit it right on the rim and wiggle it so it goes inside and outside. Two fingers again. Press harder from the outside, but fairly decent pressure from the inside too, and then pull. And every revolution you have to be one little bit higher. And let go slowly when you get to the rim, but just hit it with your finger just to compress the rim just a little bit. Stops it from sharpening out a little bit. You can get a really thin rim, which is not that good because it chips easily. So dribble the water once again, inside and outside. Fingertips right opposite. The ones on the outside are a little bit lower because they're touching the wheel head, whereas the ones on the inside are about a centimeter higher. And then you start that. Every revolution, you get a little bit higher, so even. And the speed is now slowed down because it's actually getting bigger. And then let go slowly at the rim. Just touch it with your finger just to kind of compress. Now it's quite thin. You've done two pulls. Dribble the water on the rim again. You can do a shaping just by pressing with your inside fingers and resisting with your outside fingers. Just to kind of push out a little bit more. And then at the top, just flare it a little bit more to give that a little trumpet shape. You're going to get all the water off. This is about one and a quarter pounds to one and a half pounds of clay here, I would think. Then the metal rib is for helping shaping. So basically this is going to be curved by my hand like that, just to kind of give it a, a little shape for the ball. And I'm going to press with my inside fingers against the edge of the rib to drag the water off the side. And that slip was created by the pressure of my fingers in the water. So you're losing a little bit of your piece. So we try not to drag too much off when you're doing this. Just the surface water is what you're after. And then this curve on the inside, just to drag the water out from the inside. And it's very thin. When you first throw, things are not that thin, but that's just part of learning. But after you've thrown for a while, you should be able to make things fairly thin. And they don't have to be thin, because there's something nice about picking up a piece of heavy pottery too. And of course, the thinner the pieces are, the more delicate. So there's a balance. And I always think when you've got the glaze coating on the surface of the clay, that adds to the thickness as well. Dry the wheels out. Always work on your rim to make sure that that's got a nice edge to it. I open it up a little bit. I like to flare it. Not sure if you can hear the wind, it's howling. And then somebody asked about my tool. It's basically a flat piece of wood with a little divot cut out there, two slits either side so that I can put a rubber band through and then another rubber band holds it tight. You can change the size of this by pulling a little bit. But you just basically hold that on the rim. It's an in-between between a, between a sponging or leathering. This it works pretty good. And there's a bowl. I did say I would show somebody a different system of throwing bats that I have. I have a ring that I made out of a bat, cut a hole in it. There's the two pin holes right there that fit over my pins on the wheel head. And then I got lucky. I went to a construction site and I got a bunch of these, 40 of them. Um, they were holes cut out for putting sinks in there, almost, no, probably two-thirds of an inch thick um, but basically I cut this hole here so that I can slot these inside and then you can see it lifts off easily so it's a pretty nice quick release system that I got lucky these were being thrown out at a building site to raise them up a little bit I cut a piece out of quarter-inch masonite which I put in first 
and then put this, I wet that too before I throw it with it, and then put these on top, and it actually holds them a little higher up. But it's a, when I'm making plates the same size, or bowls the same size, it's nice I use this little bat system because I don't have to, it's a quick release system basically. All right. So, dry, moist, hang it down, top hand, side hand, top hand a little bit earlier to touching the clay than the side hand, put pressure on to seal it on, top hand, side hand, and then push in, push down, move the clay around, make sure you can see that clay going up and down, so you've got all the strength necessary to center it, and then when you feel like you've done it, and up and down enough, you just go for that center point, let go slowly. There's the heel of the hand and the little finger, same here. Dimple in the center, dribble some water in, push down, pull out, you've got enough water in there, and let go slowly. And I would like to keep that rounded in the center, just a little curve rather than a flat bottom to a ball. Dribble the water right on the rim, fingertips on this side, enough pressure so you can see that the wall starts to come up. Every revolution you should be that little bit higher. You're chasing the wet spot that's above your fingers because it dries out as soon as you touch the clay. Fingertips press in, together they push together and then even pressure all the way up, rising steadily at the same speed. The wheel is being slowed down a little bit now. Centering is always fairly fast. And the wider your pot, the slower the wheel should go. Dribble the water inside and outside. Fingertips again. Put enough pressure on so you can feel your fingers push into the clay a little bit and then gradually come up through the wall. Slowed the wheel down a lot now, if you notice. When you get to the rim, put a little bit of pressure on the rim just to compress it. Get your water out. And then the metal rib bends a little bit, but you put it against the outside and use your fingertips on the inside opposite the metal rib to kind of push enough pressure to drag the water off the outside of the bowl. Let go slowly. All that slip. And this time I'm going to press a little bit more to widen the bowl because it's still not wobbling at all. <coughs> so I can actually make it a little wider. It's got enough strength so I could strengthen it, uh, widen it. Inside, drag the water off again. And then I press over my finger with the rib just to kind of widen that and give it a trumpet shape at the top. Get all the extra surface slip off the bowl. I touch the rim on the inside and outside just to make sure there's no slip still there. And then my little tool. I got two of these, one's for bowls and one's for mugs. One's got a slightly different angle cut into the ends. And then you just kind of compress the rim a little bit. slips to try to hang on there. Okay, that looks nice. There we go. Now the quick release back, use a screwdriver, just lift it right up. Alright, so two bowls. I think that's good enough for now. I'm Vaughan Smith in a stormy Nova Scotia today, um, and uh, I'll do a few more videos as the days go by. Uh, thanks for joining me. Oh, don't forget to uh, press the like button so we can get people watching the videos. All right, thanks very much. Bye.